It's such a pleasure to have you both here. So welcome to Vader Splash. And um, Jessica, I have to say, my, my, my two-year-old loves his uh, diapers, especially the giraffe ones. So oh, we switched okay. from Mickey Mouse to nice. giraffe. Nice. So yeah, we're big fans. Um, you know, Mitch mentioned some uh, great things about um, what The Honest Company is trying to aspiring to do. And Brian, let me start with you. Um, you, everybody in this world wants to leave a mark, and you have done that a couple times now with your entrepreneurial ventures like LegalZoom and Shoe Dazzle. but The Honest Company seems to aspire to be even bigger because you have a social mission. And so do you think this is going to be where you leave your greatest mark? Absolutely. Um, you know, actually, after my second venture, I told my wife I wouldn't do any more. Um, but this one kind of brought me, brought me back. Uh, it's, it's, it just feels right. It feels you know, that the time is now to be part of something that is part of a solution of a problem that exists, which is illness and families and children. And so absolutely, I, I feel that this, more than um, you know, any other ventures that I've ever been part of, is just so much more meaningful. You know, it, it, I feel that you know, the more products that we put into people's homes, you know, the safer and healthier our children are going to be, and there's nothing more rewarding than that. So this, this tops designer shoes and fashion. <laughs> so Jessica, there's a reason why this is not called the Jessica Alba Company, which many celebrities probably would be more inclined to do. So this seems that this should be, this is, you're trying to create something that's much greater. Is this also, same question, is this where you're going to leave your, your biggest mark? Um, I hope so. Um, we, I'm, you know, losing a lot of sleep over it, so. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was absolutely inspired by um, Newman's Own, where Paul Newman's name is used in the name of, uh, of that company, um, and inspired by Martha Stewart, uh, where it's her own name again. Um, but, you know, just the mission of the company um, and the values lie in, in being honest. Um, I think celebrity is great to, you know, it's a great platform um, to get the word out on something that you care about or endorse a product or what have you, sell a movie. But uh, there's really not much more to it than that. Um, and so having something that's so fleeting like celebrity and, and essentially kind of meaningless uh, attached to a company that is actually meaningful in trying to do good uh, for the world uh, and be the millennial lifestyle brand for families. Um, it would be weird for it to be called Jessica Alba. That would it would it would be really yeah. strange. Well, we'll we'll talk a little bit about but whether you're leveraging that and, and maybe having some product placements. But for now, I want to ask a quick question: How many people here actually read the labels on their paper towel and cleaning materials? 30% or so. So J&J &J just recently, well not recently, but they will, as of 2015, remove harsh chemicals and toxins from some of their baby products. But, you know, so the question is, is this socially conscious mindset, this sort of do good and, and think non-toxic, um, is that, has, is, is it more of an educational process for you guys or has the market been pretty receptive? I mean, absolutely. I think if, if nothing else, if we can be a platform where we do empower people with the knowledge and the education to make better choices for their family, our job is done. We do offer the solution to that problem because we do have non-toxic um, products that they can buy to fulfill on the promise of living this healthier world. Um, the thing about you know these big P&G companies like the one that you mentioned it's great that they're taking the harsh chemicals, some of the harsh chemicals out of the baby products, but it took two class action lawsuits for them to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and we're taking the, a different approach. We're not gonna wait until um, there are people who are getting sick and dying from a toxic chemical to not use them in a product. We're just not gonna use them in the product. We're gonna spend more uh, money on the ingredients, the raw materials. We're gonna spend money on chemistry and, um, and we're going to bring it directly to our com customer through Honest.com. And now we have great retail partners um, 
as well, but most of our, um, most of our customers uh, get Honest products through Honest.com. Right. Well, you have, Brian, you and I spoke before, you have 1,200 chemicals that you have on your not to use list. I mean, that's a lot of chemicals, but it is hard to be the perfect company, right? It's hard to, I mean, can you guarantee that everything is non-toxic, um, chemical free? Can, can you guarantee that in your products? Yeah, absolutely guarantee it. It's I not mean, chemical free though. It, it's not, it's bad chemical it's, free. It's toxic right. chemical free. So we, we stand by our products 100% of course. I mean, we, we only use uh, you know, non-toxic ingredients. And to your earlier point, I mean, we're, we're very, very proud that Procter & Gamble is going to take you know, certain ingredients that are ca cancer-causing agents out of, their, out of their products. It's going I, on children's skin. Yeah, I mean, 1,4-dioxane is like one of the worst carcinogens out there that you can put on yourself, and that's one of the ingredients that they're going to remove. But, um, you know, somebody asked us at a conference just like this, like, you know, what happens when you know, Procter & Gamble or Clorox or whoever starts taking more and more in their ingredients, you know, these bad ingredients out of their products. And, and our true answer is that would be wonderful. It'd be absolutely amazing if, you know, all these companies could, could make natural non-toxic products because that just means we're all better off, our children are better off, and future generations are better off. So we kind of liken our own kind of process as a startup to, to how Whole Foods kind of attacked organic foods, right? So nobody, nobody cared when Whole Foods was this little hippie grocery store in Austin, Texas, right? They only kind of started waking up when they became the fastest growing grocery store chain in US history. And now you could go to Albertsons and Ralph's and they have rows and aisles of organic food, right? We, we kind of see the same thing happening here where we want to be the leader, we want to lead this movement into safer, healthier products for everybody, and everybody follows suit, and then we're all better off. No, it's great. It's great to have this healthy, conscious movement um, with our food as well as with our products we use. But what are the long-term effects of using these chemicals or using products, baby wash or paper towel or toilet paper? With I mean, these paper chemicals? towels and toilet paper. That's probably not. That's, we don't make those uh, currently. It's, it's not um, on honest.com, but that's not really you know, the ones that were raising red flags. It was more around the use of chemicals and cleaning products um, in, in baby products, actually, um, like tearless shampoo, the most popular tearless shampoo on the market, has actually a numbing agent. That, yeah, there's a chemical that numbs your kid's eyes, and that's why it's, it's tear-free. No. Um, versus just being, <laughs> who knew? Um, our, our, uh, our shampoo body wash, which is safe for newborn babies, but safe for the home, whole family, is pH neutral. That's why it's tear free. So we're going to so change everything. a lot of common sense solutions to uh, a lot of issues that are out there. I think everybody here will start subscribing to the Honest Company for, for <laughs> their baby stuff and their cleaning materials, but until then, um, I don't think everyone can remember all 1,200 chemicals. I remember one doing my research. I don't even know how to say it. 1.4 1 .4 dioxin. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I remember. But can you, Jessica, give one or two um, chemicals or toxins that are really prevalent that we can all look at and avoid? I can't remember all 1,200. But. Well, I mean, the thing is, is it's just about understanding uh, the world of petrochemicals. It's, it's, it's understanding that, you know, in the last 30 years there have been 80,000 new untested chemicals brought into the marketplace and you've seen the, the dramatic rise of things like autism, ADHD, allergies, obesity, um, childhood cancers, um, with the rise of all of these toxic chemicals that are used in everything from your uh, toothpaste to your uh, you know, bathroom cleaner, to your lotions and shampoos and everything else. So um, what are the long-term long effects and what should you avoid? It's, it's a long list. It depends on how deep you kind of want to get. Um, and it's like, well, what if there's just minimal exposure here and there? You can't control, you can't live in a bubble. You can't control everything. But if you can control a little bit, say your household cleaning products, say some of your personal care products and make sure those are plant-based and safe and healthy, at least you know you're doing something. 
Um, and that's, you know, there are other companies similar to ours, not exactly like ours because there is a company that does a one great item or another great item. Um, but I think the thing that's so wonderful about The Honest Company is we're a one-stop shop. You don't have to re read the labels. You can if you want. We have a lot of information on the website about every single ingredient and product. Um, but, you know, it, it's... I created the company because I didn't feel like being a scientist and, and reading labels, um, just trying to provide basic needs for my family. Um, but it, I guess the biggest, craziest thing you should try and avoid are formaldehydes, um, which are you know, flame retardants, formaldehydes, petrochemicals, so parabens, phthalates, the usual suspects. The usual suspects. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so let's talk about the future and, um, you know, trying to do, to uphold to, to your standards, which I think we're all, now you've convinced Brian to uphold to your standards, it, it can be very costly. So um, in, in the process of, of uh, manufacturing chemical-free and using non-toxic materials, Brian, you were saying that essentially most of your products are about 10% premium across the board of, of your products. Over conventional, so yeah. Over, yes, the others, uh, for other products. So has that been a challenge? It doesn't seem like much of a premium, and I know that you have plans to expand into a number of other products, but is that the type of premium we're going to see? Like, for, for instance, cosmetics, will it be 10% or, or a lot higher? I mean, our, our products are generally around 10 to 20% more than your traditional brands that are out there. Um, and that's just a matter of the ingredients that we use, and they're just more expensive ingredients. Um, but in terms of, you know, why the 10 to 20 percent premium, we, there are great brands out there, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, California Baby is a great brand, you know, so there, there's other great brands out there, but they're very expensive, right? And, and this company was started with, with a singular purpose, which is to have everyone you know, be healthier and, and use the products. And you can't get there if you're an ultra premium price, right? So we always knew in the back of our heads that we wanted to be a, an affordable premium, an ascertainable kind of aspirational brand, right? And so I think that's gonna stay true with any of the categories that we move into, including, you know, Honest Beauty that you mentioned or, or you know, the, the organic formula that we're launching um, in the first quarter of next year. So that's always gonna be kind of like the, the, the target. And if any time we start scaling to the point where we could bring costs down, we'll definitely bring that cost savings onto the customer. So you heard that 2015, you're going to have Honest uh, Formula for babies and Honest Beauty. Yeah. So that is uh, launching in 2015. Um, you have, let's see, you've had baby diapers, baby shampoos, you started with household cleaners, wellness vitamins, and now formula and cosmetics. Jessica, talk about how you chose those products. I, I think you're sort of going down, you you're sort of have a list of the greatest offenders, correct? Um, well, we originally launched, um, you know, initially just with the basic household cleaning products that you would need, so laundry detergent, dish soaps, and basic um, body wash and things like that. Um, and the only real baby items we launched with were um, our diapers and wipes and, uh, and our healing balm. Um, but now the healing balm is for everyone. <laughs> People, we, we got a Lure um, Award recently, which is really cool, a beauty <laughs> award. I don't know if you guys know that award. But Congratulations. Yeah, Wait, for really, men too, for Brian as well? We're really happy about it. Oh. Do you use it, Brian? <laughs> it's I, like I, the I, most I amazing miracle balm for everything. <laughs> Um, but I really, yeah, we, we look at these interesting uh, categories that are out there and we want to see if we can make a real big impact. So feminine care is another uh, thing that we're getting into and we've seen some, some pretty bad things about that space and so we're like, gosh, we, we see this uh, problem and we, we know we can come up with a great solution similar to um, beauty. Um, you know, a lot of uh, beauty companies do uh, cancer uh, awareness months and and pink ribbons and and put on their packaging and and they uh, they do you know big marathons and fundraisers but they have cancer causing ingredients inside their ingredients so it feels a bit weird yeah so especially the beauty category I mean they've got these breast cancer walks they do all this stuff they're like here miss woman right put all these chemicals on your face we're gonna give you cancer but we're gonna do these cancer walks to like cure cancer. It's like, it's this vicious cycle, right? It and it just bit, goes on and on. Yeah, so it's like, how can we solve that? How can we give 
women these products that will make them feel beautiful and feel good about themselves and make them look how they want to look um, without making them ill at all um, or even the chance of them making them ill. Um, so we're really about luxury, high performance, beautiful design, but also making it affordable and, and accessible. Is that going to be available at uh, affordable, so let's say at the drug stores or, or high-end stores or just on your website? We're looking, uh, have we disclosed where, where we're going to, um, the price we, point that we're? No, we haven't, but. <laughs> you can now. But it'll be, it'll be uh, more on the mastige level. Yeah. Not prestige, but more for the masses. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and the other point to, to, to Jessica, Jessica's uh, point was that, uh, you know, beauty is a category where there just hasn't been a lot of innovation since bare minerals and bare essentials back in the day. And it's just a, it's an industry that we feel very strongly about that could be, you know, brought to, you know, to the now, right? Leading with, you know, what sells beauty, really it's, it, it, it is about being beautiful, about being sexy, about looking great. And that's really what the brand stands for with the notion that, oh, and by the way, is completely non-toxic and safe for you. What other products uh, would you like to get into, for instance, healthy snacks or better baby clothes or uh, I mean, healthy clo even clothes, right? Can't you get more or organic materials? I mean, what, what else is going to be in your hit list for, say, 2016, 2017? Well, uh, also, I, mean, I, I forgot to make the, you were asking how do we know where we're going and what categories we're going into. Um, through Honest.com, we actually have an incredible um, customer service uh, um, um, department in our office and, in, and some of them are here. You guys can say what's up. Um, and so we, um, we're, they're in-house and they field thousands and thousands of calls every day and they hear directly from our customers what they want us to make. They want us to go into, they want us to do deodorant, so we're working on a deodorant. They wanted us to go into Fem Care. You they, heard it here first, deodorant. Yeah, they want us to go into, um, you know, the beauty category, and it's like thousands and thousands of women asking us every day at a certain point, if we can, if we have the wherewithal to do it, we're gonna listen and we're gonna deliver on our promise to give them the best and the safe to, safest. So that, it really, our customers let us know where they want us to go and um, eventually, they have, a lot have asked us to, to help uh, provide um, a solution to safe and healthy snacks and things like that. So it's, it feels like it's an organic, Potentially. Um, Potentially. Yeah, roll out after organic formula. Healthy drinks, probably, probably uh, competitive, saturated. Well, when you when you think about when you think about the honest company, right? We're not really a products company per se, right? Although the bulk of our revenue is coming from online, we don't define ourselves as e-commerce. We got great retail partners in Target and Whole Foods and in Nordstrom's, but we don't consider ourselves just a brand either. I mean, we, we truly are a way of life. And when you define yourself that way, when you think of yourself that way, we can extend into a myriad of different categories and change the way people live, right? You have a choice. You have a choice to live honestly or not. You know, you could, you could eat fast food all day long or you could eat healthy. You just have a choice, and that's what the choice that we're providing. And um, it's funny because your offices really reflect that. Really, re I love I love your offices. It's oh, just thanks. yeah, it, it's they're great. And Brian had mentioned. Did you already mention this? Because I really love the idea, and I and uh -huh. I look forward to it. My husband and I are always looking for a place to bring our kids, <coughs> and someplace healthy, someplace where they can you know play and then eat well. And so you have an idea of honest experiences, right? Taking what you've created in your, in your headquarters and making that available for everybody. When, when do we get to see that? When does that happen? It's, it's definitely on the roadmap. <laughs> but the roadmap is really long. Um, so I can't, we can't promise it anytime soon. We actually had some designers work on some yeah. concepts for us, but the, the idea would be more of an honest experience center as opposed to just a retail front. I mean, it would probably sell a little bit of products, but it's more about, you know, an or like a, a, a fun play area for, for children as well as a little organic cafe. But a driver will be classrooms in the back where you could have mommy and me classes, music classes, mommy yoga, and really just kind of invite mothers in into the world of living honestly. 
I love that idea. Uh, speaking of environment, uh, Jessica, what, what is your work environment? Do you have a cubicle or, or do you have a... Do you have an office? We don't really have cubicles. You, you know we don't have cubicles at the office. <laughs> <laughs> Our office is like this with desks. Just like that. Yeah. It's, um, we're all together. Um, I, I like it because I get to yell at everybody and everybody can hear me from the middle of the room. No, I'm just kidding. I don't yell. <laughs> I play loud hip hop music on Fridays. That's what I do. You're always Mike. Um, That's why you don't have to yell. No, no. It's, um, you know, it's neat that we get to have this great open floor plan. Um, I, I don't come, from, I mean, I'm an actress, like I don't come from like a business world. So the idea of like corporate, like cubicles and like everything being like steel and gray, it just like freaked me out. Um, and I don't find it very inspiring. So I wanted the, our offices to feel like your home. And, and we have all these like cool places where you can go off and have breakout sessions because it does get a bit loud in the open floor plan. Um, so we have a lot of these really great places to do that. We have a lot of vegetation everywhere. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but I'm right in the Talk in the to you new and plan to wear because they're growing their own salads. <laughs> I mean, lettuce, right? Yeah. We have they're vertical gardens. Um, water lake, organic uh, water and healthy lake. through and through. Yeah. So I was there, you had a board meeting uh, with your investors. So tell me, what is it like negotiating with Silicon Valley VCs versus so Hollywood? No, <laughs> versus, um, <laughs> really? So no, the Hollywood really movie, interesting. Hollywood movie Every stars, time. Are they the Hollywood producers? They're just much more out there, or what's the what's the dynamic like? Hollywood there producers are insane. <laughs> I would never let them run a business. Oh my God. <laughs> they're creative. <laughs> um, so, so how do you? <laughs> How do you make those? How do you make your board meetings more fun? I mean, it sounds. Gory. Well, I, we always have popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> we always have candy, right? Yeah. You it, keep everyone so, energized. And and I get cold because they because you know they're all in suits, so they all wear want they want the air conditioning to be on 68 every time it's so freezing cold. So I <laughs> I I bring a blanket, and um, I got called out the last time last uh, visit, uh, board meeting. Um, the board member was like, I've never been in a board meeting where someone like has a blanket. <laughs> I was like, well, it's cold. You guys are all wearing suits. I don't like to be cold either. What about <laughs> negotiating? <laughs> we have blankets here, right? We have, I thought I ordered those. Okay. Um, so this, I mean, it makes perfect sense to negotiate some sort of product placements especially for Honest Beauty. Have you, have you done that? Are we going to see you know, some of your products around in some of your movies? Oh, I don't, I never even, that's so far from where my head's at. I just, I'm, I'm focused now on building the wireframes, making the flow work nicely. Um, you're building the wireframes? That's well, awesome. Well, I'm not coding them. <laughs> no, I'm not coding them. Know. I do not know how to code. My eyes go cross whenever I Impressive. see it happening. But, um, but I'm like, I think that should go there, and this should go here, and what about this here? I do a lot of that. Um, <laughs> and then I like submit pictures and fonts and, and things. Um, and I'm very just like intuitive with the way that I feel the flow should go. Yeah. Oh, um, I love your colors too. They're kind of like um, ours, like the that blue, that too, bluish. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. I'm not. I'm not promising that that's what our honest beauty is going to look like, though. I saw it, the, it some of this different. stuff. Yeah, it looks great. It looks great. Um, we're going to take some questions from Slido because I know I think there's a number of questions out there. So. Are there, I like this one, are there any products you'd like to make but can't because a necessary ingredient is harmful? Yeah, we'd love to make like, like Jack Daniels whiskey and <laughs> some other stuff. That'd be great. Seriously. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> How, you're a McDonald's fan, you were. How about better fast food? <laughs> More organic fast yeah. food. Okay, so let's switch to something, maybe this is somewhat boring. Oh, we didn't talk about China. You want to talk a little bit about China and why China and not, say, Europe? Um, sure. So China, uh, 
the obvious reason is that there's 22 million children born a year in China, so it's a very large market. You know, their middle class and upper middle class population starting next year will be the size of the entire U.S. population, right? So they're, and they're just growing so quickly. There are, you know, so many reasons. I mean, the, the products that are, you know, sold, manufactured and sold in China are, are not really trusted by the Chinese mother and the Chinese woman. And you see some sites in China that are growing astronomically. There's a company out there that started like three or four years ago. Uh, they're doing about 70 million US dollars per month right now and growing. Um, and all they do is sell international baby products. Right? There's just that much distrust. But I mean, the, a lot of problems stem from you know, they had kind of a, a formula disaster there where all these young Chinese babies died. You know, un, it's, just, it's just terrible. And so it's a pro, the Honest Company has a product and, and a mission and a brand that I think will really resonate in that market. And, and, you know, one of your missions, now we're going to just uh, focus on what I'm sure a lot of people here want to know. I had a slide up there showing how well you guys have done in the last three or four years that you've been around, already $1 billion of market cap. Almost three hundred two and a half, over two and a half years. Two and a half years, yeah. In two and a half years, yeah. $1 billion market cap, $150 million revenue run rate. That's quite impressive quite impressive, you could definitely go public. And, and Brian, I have a quote here that you gave actually to Steve, our reporter. He said, I believe the public market is what we're heading for. The reason being that we want to control our own destiny. We are mission focused. We have to control our own destiny. Um, and the public markets will, will allow us to do that. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. Um, so we never started this company with the intent of you know, selling it. Per se. We started this company really with the idea that we could make a difference in this world and, and, and really kind of create, again, safer and healthier environments for everybody. I think, you know, in order to achieve that, you've got to reach a certain scale, right? You're not changing the world. You're not saving that many people if you're doing 20 million in revenue. You know, even 100 or 200 or 500 million in revenue, you get there by being dramatically large. Right? And I think the only way that we could achieve that is by taking this to the public market. And the, the other instance is there's so many companies out there that start with the right intentions. Right? They say, I'm going to make a, a product that's better for you or whatever, and, and they sell out. And they sell out very early. Right? And they haven't, they haven't made that impact, and they'll sell to a large CPG company. The first thing that these companies do is they change the formulations on all the products. So you haven't achieved anything. You might have made, you might have put some bucks in your pocket, but you haven't, you haven't changed anything. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we started with the idea that we want to make that change. Great. So when do you start your roadshow? And have you chosen your bankers? <laughs> um, wow, that's a, that's a we pointy may question. We go public. <laughs> we might. This is yeah. not something that's for sure, for sure happening anytime soon. And yeah. yeah. what will be your ticker symbol? <laughs> Have you already thought about that? It'll be ALBA, A-L-B-A. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. I don't think that's taken. <laughs> so you have right now, um, what, 50% of your revenue comes from diapers, right? Something not, like not, that? No. Around that? No? Oh, I thought, um, well, it's pretty significant, right? Diapers it's would be significant. So, yeah. and, I, and I know you've said that you wanted to be, uh, the next P&G has a $250 billion market cap, quite large. I think they're selling, what, $4.5 billion dollars worth of diapers? No, 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 it's in the, that's their market cap is $250 billion, something like that. But I'm just curious, how do you go after, what are your plans to go after a P&G if you want to be a P&G when they're doing four and a half billion dollars in, in diaper sales. Wow, that's a big company. That is huge. <laughs> um, no, I mean, what we, what we, what I, I'm not sure where you got that, that, that statement, but um, we are trying to build a foundation for a modern day family brand, right? And you, know, you look at the brand, the, these large CPG companies that existed, they all started at some point, right? I mean, P&G, I'm sure Mr. it was either Mr. Proctor or Mr. Gamble that was selling ivory soap out of the back of this truck, and you know they grew from there. And so, I mean, we, we kind of look at these large companies out there and say, why not? Why can't that be us? Why can't we build a foundation to become that over the course of the next hundred years? And we also look at ourselves more of a 
a lifestyle brand. I mean, we sell very well a crib, a non-toxic uh, four-way crib made out of a sustainable wood, and we give a crib away to a child in need to every crib that's that's sold. And that's something that not a normal company in in you know the CPG world would do. We also have strollers, we have blankets and toys and and different things. So um, I feel like we're much more of a lifestyle mm -hmm. than maybe a traditional CPG. And, and socially conscious, so you touched on something. I believe, is it 1% of your revenue that you give toward, what is that? It's 1% of net revenues goes to uh, families in need and also for um, uh, chemical research. And we just launched uh, the Honest Company uh, Ultra Clean Lab at Mount Sinai in the city of New York, where Dr. Phil Landrigan, who's one of the most foremost experts in research and chemicals, is leading the charge to, um, to try to find which chemicals we should be avoiding, which chemicals, which chemicals cause which diseases. And because today, I'll tell you, you can't say, you know, if you're pregnant and you ingest this chemical, you've got a five times higher likelihood of having a kid with autism. Just not enough research has been done, and we're here to solve that. Do you, there's a lot of startups here, and a lot of them are cash-strapped. But I really like the idea of, of being, of, of being, uh, of giving back right from the start. And how would you advise them on, on giving back? And I don't know if they can give one percent of their revenue, but how do you start them thinking about it early on? We embedded it in the business model, and I remember my first very exciting board meeting. I actually like our, our board. They're fun. We have a good time at dinner after a few cocktails. Um, but I, I pitched them this idea of like, yes, we're going to make these safe and healthy, beautifully designed, affordable products that are modern, but we're also going to give back. And they're like, OK, you can do all that other stuff. I don't know about affordable, and we were not really sure about the giving back thing. Um, and I said, well, how about we try it, and if it's not working, then we can always adjust, because we were a startup. And luckily, we've never been had to adjust. And, and frankly, when we go into our board meetings and we talk about you know, changing people's lives and saving you know, infants' lives with this crib or giving children clean diapers um, that, that normally would have to wear a, a soiled and one that's, and reuse it all day, they're, they're excited and they're passionate and they're happy to be able to provide that to families um, from the jump. So I think if you just embed it in your, in your model in the beginning, um, then it's, you know, hopefully no turning back. I mean, that's very, I mean, it's inspirational for a lot of startups here to, to, to hear. And Brian, you are a prolific angel investor. And so you look at a lot of these startups you are creating a company which, I mean, really has a double bottom line, mm -hmm. plus you're giving 1% of your revenue. But so how do you, when you look at a company, would you actually invest in a company that has a double bottom line? A lot of, com a lot of investors wouldn't. Would you encourage companies to have oh, that absolutely. type of? Absolutely, absolutely. I think, I think it's good for you know, your own company. You're, it's good for your souls. I think it's good for your employees to believe in what you do. Um, and I think, the millennial buyer, right, wants to make a difference. They, they, they truly do care about what your company does and how you're going to affect change. We're out of time. I think we oh, could I keep going, but I do want to, I want to ask a question because we're in LA and you're establishing yourself as one of the um, essentially role model companies here. So what is Honest Company doing besides hiring a number of people, which is great, <laughs> employing people, but what are Any you doing Any coders out there to, uh, want to spend some time with me, uh, working on some more She's brains. gonna do this, and, and <laughs> this thing over here. Um, so what are you doing to, um, to the, L, you know, for the LA ecosystem, partnering with startups, hiring engineers, what, what are you doing? Oh, we do a tremendous amount. I mean, we're, we're in contact with, with a lot of great startups here in Los Angeles. Um, any new ad platforms, we're one of the first to, to try it out and trial it. Uh, we give a lot of, we, we have a lot of entrepreneurs come through the Honest Company just to experience the culture, to experience, you know, what it is to be a fast growth company. Um, if any of you guys, seriously, and I know there's a lot of people in here, but any of you want to come by the office, we'll, we'll do it. You know, you know, come by, get inspired, ask some questions. It's Brian 
I should not do this, huh? <laughs> Brian at honest.com. And seriously, we'll, we'll set up you know, a couple of days where you could come by and just tour and, 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 and meet with us. Okay. Well, I, I think we would want to add another 10, 15 minutes, but uh, I think we've got, a, we've got a competition to run here. So, but thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.